Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. So as you saw by the title, I'm doing a basic manicure today, and I'm going to show you the steps that I take for a manicure. So first, I'm just removing her polish using a pure acetone polish remover, and I'm making sure that I get them very clean so that there's no polish left on the nails. So now here I'm going in with my nail file. Um, I forget the name of these nail files but I really like them for manicures because they leave the nails very smooth on the tip. They don't leave like those little hairs of the nail if you file um, them short or anything like that. They really get them nice and clean and that's what I like. Um, this customer in particular, she likes her nails to be square with the sides a little rounded but mainly the, the square shape because they're already so short. So I'm just going in with my file and I'm making sure that they're even. Um, they didn't need clipped or anything, they just needed filed and cleaned up. And I'm also, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm etching the top of the nail because this customer has um, splitting that she gets where she gets kind of like a double nail, which I think is from either being too dry or sometimes moisture. So I'm just going in and I'm cleaning up and I'm making sure that they're smooth on the tops and nice and even on the tip of the nail. So now that I have filed her nails, um, the stuff that I just added into the water was a little bit of a cuticle softener because now it's the cuticles. Um, I'm adding the cuticle softener on top just to make sure that they're thoroughly being um, softened so that it's easier for me to push the nails up. I'm using my metal cuticle pusher and I'm pushing the nails back and making sure that I'm getting any dirt from under the nail. Um, that's a, on the nail tip. I'm getting the skin that's on the sides and just making sure that I'm being very thorough and getting any dead skin and cuticle off of the nail plate so that whenever I am finished I don't have to continue to go back um, and fix things before I polish. But when you do the cuticles you do want to be gentle. Um, if the cuticles are not moving or if the the skin is not pushing back you can have them soak for extra time um, but you never want to be forceful because this can still hurt the customer as well so you want to make sure that their hands are at least soaking in the bowl from um, two to four minutes not to where their hands are wrinkly but enough to just where you're making sure that skin is being um, softened here I'm just checking her nail because she had broke that fingernail um, so I was just checking to make sure it was even and everything but as you see all you have to do is slightly push and that skin will start to lift up it's kind of white it's white on everyone um, and you want to make sure that you're just thoroughly getting any skin that is stuck I'm taking um, the back of my cuticle pusher and I'm going inside the corners of the nail because that's where it gets stuck. Um, next I'm going to carefully, carefully, carefully take my metal cuticle nippers and I'm going to clip any cuticle skin that is sticking up or that is stuck inside the corners of the nail. 
Sometimes people get calluses on the corners of their fingers. You can clip those off. Any visible skin that you see, you should be clipping. You never want to dig. You never want to overclip. You only want to clip what you can see. More than likely, when you go to buff the nails, the cuticle will just come right off. Um, I do not dig into my customers' nails. I do not forcefully clean their cuticles. I only get what is visible because you do not want to cut anyone or you don't want to damage someone's fingernail or, like I said, cut them because you're being too forceful or you're trying to over, you know, overdo it. Now after I have gotten all of the skin and the cuticle off of the nail plate, I'm just going to go in with my orange buffer. I really like the orange buffers because I feel like they really get the nail very smooth. And I'm going around and making sure that the nail is smooth. I'm going in between the area where the nail and the skin meet on the sides and I'm making sure I get those areas because that's where a lot of the extra skin hide. And I'm even going around the cuticle too. Um, when you do buff, you want, you don't want to be very forceful because sometimes the buffers can also be sharp. So um, sometimes I'll take an old buffer and a new buffer and I'll rub them together, um, which will score the sides like you can do a nail file just to make sure that they're not too sharp for the customer. But you want to make sure that you're getting the tip of the nail and the edge of the nail. And you want to make sure that um, you're smoothing the nail plate um, as much as you can. After I have smoothed and buffed the nails, I'm just going in with a little cuticle oil and I'm moisturizing and rubbing that into the nail plate because a lot of the products can dry the nails out so I want to make sure that those nails are being hydrated as well. Once I finish both hands, I'm going in for a hand massage. Um, I really, when it comes to the nails and the hands, I really like using oil only because oil seeps into every crack and every crevice of the nails. Lotion does too, but I like oil for the nails. Now when you're doing daily moisturizing, you can always use oil or you can lose, use lotion. But for the manicure purpose, I like to use the oil. Um, once I am done giving my hand massage, um, a hand massage in my own opinion should take about five minutes because a manicure should really only take about 20 minutes. Um, you don't want to spend an hour on a manicure. There's no reason to have that long time for a manicure. But once I'm done with the hand massage, I am going to wrap my customer's hands in a nice warm towel. Um, this will allow the oil to really soak into the skin and it will help moisturize thoroughly um, with the nail plate and with the hand as well.
Once I'm done with the hand massage and the hot towels, this is the time where you would have your customer pay. Some do before, some do um, before they polish. Um, and this is also the time where you want to have another check with your customer, have them look at their hands, make sure they don't see any straggly skin or any um, nail that should be off or anything because your customer's opinion is the most important. Um, and once that is done, I'm just going to, um, I sprayed some alcohol in the nail just because sometimes the oil can get in the way of the polish sticking. So once I have done that, I'm going in with my base coat. This particular customer has amazing nails and she actually brings her own products that she's been using for years and I just go with it because she likes it and I don't see any issues with it or anything like that. Now this is a base coat. Um, this base coat in particular is Nail Teak. Um, I'm not sure which number it is but she loves it because it helps, it really helps protect her nails and they're fine and they grow and all that kind of stuff. Um, once I'm done with the base coat, I let that dry for a second and then we'll go in with the polish. Once the base coat has dried, um, I'm going in with the color that she liked. Um, this particular color, I believe, is called Stark Right, Stark White or white white or something it's it's a pretty bright white color and it's by china glaze um the colors is kind of weird because um in some spots it like it dried if it, it dried really quick if you're not familiar with china glaze china glaze dries very fast so um when i do the base uh, layer well the first layer of the nail i always just do a very thin coat and it also depends on the polish as well um, I got a little color on her finger, so I just went in with my dotting tool and cleaned it up. Um, but yeah, when you're doing a manicure, your first layer should be kind of thin. You never want to do a very thick layer because you want to make sure that the layers are drying in between. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to let the nails dry. And then I'm going to go in with my second layer of polish. And then you'll notice that... Um, the second layer is always a lot better and it kind of fills in the spaces that weren't filled in before.
Once I let both layers dry, I'm going in with my top coat. Um, this particular top coat was by Sasha Beat. Um, it's a gel-like top coat and it also promotes um, extended wear. Um, I really like the top coat. She brought it, so I used it. Um, you'll notice when you apply the top coat, the top coat tends to fill in spaces that are not um, completely filled in. Um, it slightly will change the color of the polish because it's kind of like a filler. But once the top coat is on, my customer is going to sit for about 15 minutes and her nails will be completely dry. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and of course share. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again guys, and don't forget, glitter makes everything better, so keep shining. Have a good one. Thanks again.